And we praise God for the wondrous blessings that God has given to us as a family and as a church family. How many of you remember the subject that I spoke last month? Do you still remember? Last month I talked about the third angel's message. The third angel's message is a warning for us not to worship the beast in his image and not to receive his mark in our forehead or in our hands. Otherwise, if we worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in our forehead or in our hand, anybody who worship the beast will receive the wrath of God and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb of God. The Bible also prophesied in Revelation chapter 18, chapter um, 13, verse 8, which is our scripture reading for today. The Lord Jesus Christ prophesied that the whole world is going to worship the beast. Instead of worshiping God who created the heavens and the earth, the whole world will worship the beast, except those whose names are written in the book of life. And that is my subject today, the last praise of the text, except those whose names are written in the book of life. How is our name written in the book of life? When is it written? How does God retain our names in the book of life? What are the evidences and significance that our names are written in the book of life? How can we know that my name is written in the book of life? That is my subject today. In John chapter 1, verse 12, the Bible says that as many as receive him, meaning Jesus, anybody who received Jesus as his Savior and Lord of his life and believe in him is given by God the Father the right to become children of God. And as children of God, we express it in baptism. The servant of the Lord's wrote that except a man be born again in water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, after receiving and accepting Christ as our personal Savior, we declare it in public through baptism. In that way, we become born again in water and in spirit, and we belong to Christ. And at that moment, our names are written in the book of life. That means to say, we belong to Jesus. But we need to continue. We need to abide in Christ. As it is written in John chapter 15, Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit apart from the vine, so are ye. So in order for our names to be retained in the book of life, we need to abide in Jesus. Otherwise, if we don't abide in Jesus, there will be no fruit. And what is the fruit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, goodness, and faithfulness. Against such, there is no law. In other words, this fruit is not contrary to the law of God. God is expecting us to have fruit. The fruit can also be revealed in the growth of the church. When the church were united during the first century and they were devoted to the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ from Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, every day, the saved were added to the church. That is the evidence that the church is growing because of the Spirit of God. 
because our names are written in the Book of Life. Is there a possibility that after our names were written in the Book of Life, is there a possibility for those names to be blotted out? Go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 32, verse 23. Exodus chapter 32, verse 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So if we willfully commit sin, after we have accepted Christ as our Savior, just like the Israelites during the olden days, those who willfully transgressed the law of God, their names were blotted out from the book of life. We have the same God yesterday, today, and forever. The God of Moses, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the people during the Old Testament times, the God of the Israelites, is the same God we worship today. He has the same character, and he would like us to abide in Christ. Otherwise, if we don't abide in Christ, we are not going to bear fruit. We are going to die spiritually. There are many people who are alive physically, but dead spiritually, because the Holy Spirit is not within the heart. So, for us to make sure that our names are retained in the Book of Life, we need to continue to abide in Christ every day. We need to pray. We need to read our Bible and share. That's how we grow as a church. When we read our Bible, when we pray first of all, before you read your Bible, pray for God to give you the understanding. And then read it. I have read the Bible many, many times from cover to cover. Read it and understand it and share it to your neighbor. Every day I do the sharing related to my job as a chaplain for hospice agencies. But we were prohibited by the state to baptize those people with terminal illness, those that are patients with the hospice agencies, we were prohibited to baptize them and to bring them to church. We can be accused of proselyting. So here in America, the law of the state sometimes contradict with the Gospel Commission. Um, but every day we do, myself, every day I visit people in their homes, those with terminal illness, even here in Apple Valley in Hesperia. I come every day here in this area, in Los Angeles, San Diego, and even in Barstow, in Blight. An average of 200 miles a day, I travel to visit people in their homes, especially those with terminal illness and their families. And there were several of them already who asked me to baptize them. But I said, I cannot do this because we are prohibited by the state to baptize people with terminal illness. Uh, especially those that are bedridden, we cannot bring them to the baptistry and baptize them. Just like, you know, the thief that was crucified on the sides of Jesus, they believed in Jesus, but they were not baptized. But they were given by Jesus the assurance that they will be with him in paradise because they have accepted Christ as their savior. That's the same thing that's happening with my patients. Many of them have accepted Christ, whether they're Catholic, Protestants, Iglesias, or Baptist. They accepted Christ, but I cannot baptize them. And I believe we'll see them in heaven. Some of them, after my visit, two or three days, they die. But I still visit the family on their bereavement. That's part of my ministry as a chaplain. And I love this, this work because in that way, 
I can connect with people in their homes every day. And also through the internet. The internet is one of the, the best way of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I sleep at 12 o'clock in the evening because I answer those, those questions in the Facebook. I have about 500 of them connected through the internet. Bible studies through the internet. Some of them are in Saudi Arabia. Some of them are in different parts of the United States and in the Philippines. I have never saw them personally, but through the internet since the time of COVID-19, we had the privilege of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ via online. And that's one way. Because the Lord said, if you could not speak for me, I can use the stones in the rock to speak for me. God can use our cell phone. God can use our tablets, our computers, in order to reach out people where they are. Whether they are in China, Japan, Saudi Arabia, or wherever they are in the world, as long as they, are, they have internet connections, we can reach out people where they are. So whatever is the gift that the Lord has given to you, use it for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we need to pray, we need to know our Bible, and we need to share what is in the Bible. Because the theme of the Bible is Jesus. When we know the Bible, we come to know Jesus. And when we know Jesus, we come to know the Father. Because nobody has seen the Father, but we can know the Father through the Son. That's the reason why God the Father sent His only begotten Son to this planet Earth in the flesh in order for us to know God through His Son. Jesus Christ is the express image of God the Father. And nobody can go to the Father in heaven except through the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we can only know the Father through Jesus. And Jesus is revealed in the Bible. Actually, the book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is the summary of the entire Bible. When we read the book of Revelation and understand it, we come to know Jesus, our Savior and Lord. And knowing Him, sharing Him, will bear fruit. Cast your bread upon the waters, you will find it after many days. There were times when when we do Bible studies, when we do sharing through the internet, we never meet them personally, but when we go to heaven, somebody will tap on your shoulder and say, it was you who invited me here. It was you, and it was through you that I have come to know Jesus as my Savior and Lord. And you have a good ministry here for your community service. That's a good ministry. It is one way of bringing people in, but it should not end on feeding them physically. We need to feed them spiritually. Those people who come to get food during Friday, take note of who they are and visit them in their homes or where they are and share to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. In that way, Apple Valley will grow. There are many ways. There are many ways whereby this church can grow, not only through our community services, but whatever gifts the Lord has given you, whatever responsibility you have in the church, whether you, have de you are a deacon, elder, deaconess, Sabbath school superintendent, teachers, young people, whatever is your gift, use it. Utilize it in that way you are sure that your name is written in the book of life. Paul himself gave an assurance to his helpers that their names are written in the book of life. And that is an assurance that God has given us that uh, our names are also written there. In Luke chapter 20, verse, uh, chapter 10, I should say, verse 20, the Lord said, Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. When Jesus sent his disciples to evangelize the neighboring area, the disciples were rejoicing 
that even the spirits submit to them. But Jesus said to his disciples, Rejoice not because the Spirit submitted to you, but rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. So when we go and evangelize, when we go and share our faith to others, that is the significance that your names are written in the book of life. But if you just close your hands and keep the truth in yourself, do not share it to others, that is not a good evidence. That is not a good evidence that your name is written in the book of life. And if you fight each other in the church, that is not the evidence that your name is written in the book of life. The Lord said, by this shall all me know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So therefore, let us love one another, because that is the greatest evidence that our names are written in the book of life. If you are a fault finder and a quarrelsome, beware. Pray that your name will not be blotted out in the book of life. Because if you remain quarrelsome and troublemaker, there's a danger that your name is not in the book of life. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, go with me to Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You now there are three kinds of books in heaven. There's the books of life. The book of life is where your name and my name is written. There's the book of death. That is where the names of those who refuse to believe in Jesus are written. In the book of remembrance is where what you do on earth is recorded. Whatever we do on earth is recorded in the book of remembrance. Your community services, your Bible studies, your being faithful deacons and deaconesses in the church, and elders of the church, pastors of the church, being faithful servant of the Lord is an evidence that your name is written in the book of life. Pray that your names will be retained in the book of life. That God will not blot out your name, just like the Israelites who became stick neck They worship, you know, after 40 days was away from them. When he comes back, they were already worshiping grieving image of a golden cup. And that's what makes the Lord angry. God was angry because after 40 days that Moses was away, they made golden cup and they worshiped the golden cup instead of worshiping God. History will repeat itself. In the last days, instead of worshiping God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, people will worship the beast in his image and will receive his mark in the forehead and his hand. And those who do that will be blotted out from the book of life. Their names will be written in the book of death. So my brothers and sisters, let us all be faithful to the Lord. Whatever is your responsibility in the church, from the pastors to the elders, deacons, superintendents, leaders of department, let's do our job faithfully. And above all, let us love one another because that is the first fruit that signifies that our names are written in the book of life. Keep your names written in the book of life. Pray to the Lord to retain your names in the book of life and pray for the Holy Spirit to help you and strengthen you that we may all bear fruit. And if ever there is anybody whose names had been taken out or blotted out from the book of life, we need to reach out for them. According to the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, 
if anyone is overtaken with a fault, you which are spiritual, restore. Brothers and sisters, from the pastors, elders, deacons, and deaconess, if you find anybody, any member of the church, overtaken with a fault, restore with kindness, with meekness. Visit those who are overtaken with a fault and pray with them. Restore, bring them back to the fault that their names may be written again in the book of life. I pray that all our names are written in the book of life.